This issue of surveillance yeah. as a form of repression, uh, is the ACLU representing Ed Snowden? We are in contact with Edward Snowden, <coughs> excuse me, and I, I can't say too much about it publicly. Uh, he's someone that uh, we've known Glenn, Glenn Greenwald well, for a number of years. Uh, well, let's say, we try our best. We bought a new laptop with encryption <laughs> devices that we think they probably have a way to hack into. Uh, look, I think Edward Snowden has done this country a service. I said this at the Aspen Security Forum. I was on the, uh, the panel with Jay Johnson, the former uh, general counsel of the Department of Defense, with Jane Harmon. You would have thought I was uh, an anarchist when I said that regardless of whether or not what he did was legal or illegal, whether or not we think the, the sedition laws or the espionage laws are being used to possibly prosecute Snowden are too broad, the fact is that he has kick-started a debate that we did not have. This debate was anemic. Everyone was asleep at the switch. Well, the Obama administration absolutely denied to the point of Clapper perjuring himself before Congress, saying they weren't spying on Americans. Data on Americans. And only when the documents, the actual documents, were presented. So the Obama administration encourages people to get the documents and show them, were they forced to back off? And if we had had this revelation of the NSA programs, the PRISM, the Section 702 program through the Patriot Act, if this had occurred under the George Bush administration, there would be such an outcry among your viewers, among our members, among the general public. But because it's President Obama, and because he has done some very good things on things like gay rights and voting rights, I give him credit for that. But because these policies and programs have been announced under his presidency, people begin to accept them a little bit more. And they're even more pernicious because as they get established under this presidency, this power of surveillance to be able to track the phone calls of all people in America, incoming and outgoing, how long your phone call, who you receive a phone call from, who you make a phone call to, metadata is very personal, identifiable information. You can learn a lot about a person from, met, quote, metadata. The questions about being able to track the emails that we send from here overseas. Who do we have as president in two years? If we have a, you know, Ted Cruz or Mitt Romney, um, how are we to be secure that that data, that trove of lawful American activity, doesn't begin to be used in more pernicious ways? And so I think it's a, it's a real mistake for us to Well, keep, how do you know it's not happening right now? Yeah, well, we think it's happening right now, in fact. Well, Sam, I'm, I'm interested. The, the revelations on, uh, of Snowden and the extensive, uh, the, the massive amount of uh, surveillance, not only within the U.S., but in other countries by the, the NSA. What's been the impact in places like Egypt uh, of these revelations? There is a, a huge, of course, spillover um, effect. Uh, I mean, you, you see it um, most uh, prominently in, in places like Brazil, of course, because um, uh, it, it turns out that, that, um, uh, that some of the surveillance particularly targeted the president uh, and, and some of her communication as, as well as um, uh, businesses. But we also see it in, in the UK um, because of the revelation about uh, the, the collaboration, uh, the sharing of this information with Israel. It has prompted multiple um, um, lawsuits uh, that are seeking some clarity. Uh, but it's also important to note that it has pushed some of the uh, telecommunication and internet providers uh, to have uh, at, at least uh, some um, um, some more transparency. They have all gone public. So now, uh, for instance, we know how many requests uh, Facebook and Twitter and others received from the Egyptian government in the last uh, six months, uh, how many of them um, uh, were actually accepted. Uh, and and if, But we don't know uh, which one, which accounts, of course, were monitored uh, and, and which um, uh, information information was provided to, to the Egyptian government. It's important to note that before the Snowden revelations, this is something that we have all been concerned about. Um, we all came together, the same 10 organizations in the International Network for Civil Liberties organizations that produced this protest report came together to support a, a lawsuit filed um, by the ACLU um, um, against um, a Clapper, again, on, on the NSA surveillance. And, and we all worked together on, uh, on an amicus brief to the 
Supreme Court of the United States saying that we are all affected by the NSA program. We cannot do our work in Egypt or in Canada or in Israel or in Kenya uh, when we cannot communicate uh, when we know that our emails could be um, uh, intercepted uh, by the United States by the state's uh, security apparatus. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court did not uh, find um, uh, that, that, that our, our claim uh, was, was compelling enough. But we hope that uh, precisely as Anthony said, because of the, this huge um, outcry over the Snowden revelations, uh, the U.S. judiciary is going to start looking differently at this issue. We want to thank you all for being with us, and we're certainly going to link to the report. Uh, we want to thank Abby Deshman of the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, Hassan Bagat, uh, Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, and Anthony Romero, head of the American Civil Liberties Union. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. And we